Hey, so it's day 14. It's actually two weeks today that I started on the Monday, so today's Sunday. And I've decided to take a day off, which I really need. I feel like my legs and feet, hips are okay, but um, mentally I'm pretty short, to be honest. Um, I could kind of see it building up in, um, in my previous videos, looking at my face, to be honest. But um, I had to admit to myself yesterday that I just couldn't really function mentally. When I, when I arrived here last night, um, I came over really dizzy and thought I was going to faint, actually. It's a combination of probably not eating enough or at the right times, um, not getting enough rest and just being worn out, needing needing a break completely. So what I've decided to do is stay here, just going to sleep a lot, read my book. Um, there's a lot of rabbits around. I wonder if I can capture one for you. There's one just running across here now. Um, so there's a pub just around the corner and I'm hoping they're going to do Sunday lunches so I can hopefully get myself, if they do it, a veggie Sunday roast would just be awesome right now. And, um, and try to drink as well. I think I was a bit dehydrated. Just drink, snack, sleep. That's my plan. So, um, because also in the guidebook, the day that will be tomorrow for me, the section after Dufton, they say it's the toughest day of the whole walk. We go really, really high, um, do knock fell, and it's a 20 mile day. So I think it's worth having a rest before that because it, also it can be a bit dodgy with the navigation in the middle. You, it's easy to get lost, especially if the cloud comes down pretty low. So you want to make sure you're on the ball. And I don't, you know, because I'm walking on my own, I don't have a backup person that's going to check navigation and things like that. So I need to make sure that I'm all good. The other exciting thing that's happened, of course, is that I now have my new battery charger. Here it is. Um, so I don't have to worry quite so much about um, power and it's a bit easier to upload my videos and things like that. So I've managed to get up to date with all that. Um, this actually, I don't know how effective it is, has a little solar panel on it as well. Um, so I'm leaving it in the sun right now to see if that's going to work. If not, then I'll perhaps plug it in in the pub and um, top it up so that I'm all you know, stocked up before I go. I'm going to have an explore soon because I haven't actually explored the village yet. Um, I've been doing kind of camp chores and put all my laundry on the, on the rail there. And um, I've actually put some Vaseline on my boots, cleaned them up. Um, so it feels good actually not to be rushing off somewhere, especially if I was doing the 20 mile, I would have had to leave seven o'clock this morning probably to be able to arrive in a reasonable time so that's what I'm going to have to do tomorrow but of course after a rest day hopefully I should feel fantastic tomorrow so it feels quite a relief to decide that um, I think I could probably have pushed my body um, further but then it would be harder to get my energy back later on um, you know and this is supposed to be enjoyable isn't it right so I think you know the weather's actually perfect as well I can sit outside I don't have to sort of hide inside it's good drying weather to get my laundry done and get all the chores done so I'm gonna put this video together with tomorrow's video everyone's in Sunday mode so it's a pretty late start I mean it's already 11 30 um, so soon I'll head over to the pub and see if I can get some food and probably have a nice siesta this afternoon I should think all right I'll see you soon Good morning, it's now day 15 and I feel fantastic for having a break, that was such a good plan. So I feel like you can see it in my face as well, can't you? I don't look so sporty and kind of weird. <laughs> so I'm now leaving Dufton, this is the first little trail. Today's going to be a really big day 
so I've left really early it's now I left at quarter past six actually it's now 20 past six and um, basically I've got to climb a lot of mountains today so there's one like massive climb to get on top and then you kind of go up and down over the mountains we go over Knockfell over Crossfell today so the weather forecast looks fantastic um, all clear a little bit cloudy maybe temperatures about 17 or something like that so good walking temperature you know not too hot like it was a couple of weeks back so I'm actually feeling quite excited about today I want to get to Alston that's the 20 miles if I feel like I can't get there there's a place where I can camp about I think it's about five or six miles before Alston already got a really nice view so I mentioned this morning to my neighbour hey there's a lot of midges around this morning aren't there and he just came over with a bottle of Avon skin soft it's like a kind of moisturizing oil apparently midges hate it um, so they leave you alone and of course it saves you having to put DEET or some kind of poisonous thing on your skin so I put it all around my face because they always bite me, they seem to bite me around the edge of my face and um, ankles, I love ankles and they just left me alone after that so um, tricks of the trail guys Avon Skin Soft Sun just came out in my part treating me with this glorious view quite still just the tiniest of breezes all right so this should give you an idea of where I am exactly all right so I'm here we've got to follow the yellow line is the Pennine way first we get to knock old man 780 meters high then we go up to Great Dun Fell 848 meters high Little Dunfell is next to 842. It's not that much littler, is it? And then we get to mighty Crossfell over here. Mm, I think that says 882, something like that. So I thought I'd done some climbing, but um, apparently the climbing is just to begin. So the path goes up there. This is pretty steep, I've got to be honest. It's just like climbing upstairs. So that's Donald disappearing into the distance. He uh, started an hour after me this morning. He did the he's done the AT in in America, done the PCT. He's hoping to do what I'm doing today and a few miles extra, apparently, because he doesn't think that's quite far enough. Wow, crazy. So I'm in the area where they call the Heights. This is old, uh, Knock Old Man. So this one uh, that we can see with the, the big ball, big kind of giant golf ball on, on the top and all the communication stuff is actually Great Dunfell. Gosh, from here it doesn't look so big, but I've just caught sight of the two guys that are up ahead of me and they're like little specks on the side of that mountain. So I guess it's kind of bigger than I think it is. So this is always interesting, keep me on track. So it says Dufton, five and three quarter miles. So that's what I've just done, which is about what I would have thought. Garrigal, nine and three quarters. That's the first place I can camp if I want to. But I'm doing good because now, it's only quarter past nine, I've, it's taken me three hours to do just about six miles. So I'm going about two miles an hour, which is a good speed. Um, yeah, it's going to take me a while, isn't it? How big it is now that I'm right next to it. So 
I've done, this is great, done fell with the dome on it. And the next one is little done fell. And then the one after that is cross fell that you can see in the background. Just come across this carved in the rock. PW for P uh, Pennine Way. Up there and down here. It's got pictures of horseshoes going across. I've got it's starting to get really cold. It's very windy up here. The wind isn't actually that warm. So I keep thinking I've got to cross fell. There's um, another one that, here that looks like it might be the top, but no, the top is up over there in the distance. I just passed another one in the background here, thinking that was cross fell. <laughs> no, it's not. So <laughs> I think that's cross fell there. We're kind of generally in cross fell, but um, not quite at the peak yet. So that's what you call a trig point. This is cross fell, and it is actually a proper cross as you can see, which is quite handy because wherever the wind's blowing from you can shelter. And they put a little seat around here as well. Just about to see Great Dent Fell off in more or less distance now. So now I think I've done most of the climbing. Now it's downhill. To be some of the boggiest section I've seen so far. I just had to squelch through some of this. It must be fairly close to Greg's hut, I can see it on the map. Um, Greg's hut is a shelter that they put there, you know, for bad conditions so that walkers can um, get out of the weather conditions. I can't see it yet, but it can't be too far away. So we've got to the moor apparently. I think I saw a glimpse. You see those mounds there? Um, Greg's hut, I think, is just sort of tucked behind those. So I'm going to go and have a look and if I can get in, which I probably will be able to, I think I'm going to make some noodles um, and stop for an early lunch. It's now sort of 11 o'clock-ish. Feeling hungry, but then always hungry. So look at this view though. That is the moors. So that's where we're going to be tramping across later. Yeah. Here it is. Quite a cute looking little hut, isn't it? It's even got its own tree. Greg himself. Please sign the visitor's book. Cool. Looks slightly creepy. So this is like a sleeping room. Goodness knows what's under there. Oh, this must be the visitor book. <laughs> yeah, okay, Impala. Even a washing line, look. Magnesium. There's a lot of the food here too. Some pasta and stuff. Cool, eh? It's got to be done really, hasn't it? Having some super noodles. seem to be a soul around except me. I've been scanning the horizon to see if there's any other walkers behind me but there's just nothing. There's a few birds, there's a few sheep. I wonder if this has something to do with the lead mining that was going on around here. There's that little walls that you can see built inside all the rocks. Doing pretty well with the weather, aren't I? Apparently this 
um, hillside and over Cross Fell gets the worst weather in England consistently year after year. So <laughs> to get sunshine, I mean we've got a bit of clouds back there but actually not too bad at all. Temperatures are okay, you know, especially for walking. Following this um, track, I've been following it for a while now. It's now quarter to one in the afternoon. It's a lot warmer now that I've descended a bit and it's also more sheltered on this side. So I don't have that howling freezing wind that I had at the top. So I'm just kind of doing little chants in my head. Um, like a walking meditation, I guess. And just picking a couple of words and repeating them in time with my steps. And to be honest, it seems to work. The time flies. I've only seen, I saw one woman passing me the other way. And there was a guy at the top passing me the other way. Very few people. It's quite nice actually, to be away from it all. It's like following the yellow brick road this. It just goes on and on and on and on and on a bit more. Scenery's changing a little bit, I guess. Got a view of these kind of mountains over here, which I haven't seen before. And I can't see the mountains where I just came from now. Stop doing chants in my head now. I kind of got distracted and forgot. So I don't feel like there's much in my head at all, actually, at the moment. How can that be? monotony of the walking I think maybe I'm in a pure meditative state and it's actually a good thing what do you reckon is that possible maybe some interesting water features next to the path which is mildly exciting they don't seem to show up on the map so I guess they're just collections of water from the streams or something. Seems like it's been chipped out on purpose though, doesn't it? Looking at the sides of it. There's a little wall here. Let's have a little look over and see what's on the other side. There's a few houses down there. Sort of dotted along. I can see a road in the distance. So it's very exciting. The colour of the road has changed. It's slightly bluey now. And that seems to be Garrigal. There was a sign up there saying Garrigal, so that's why I think it's Garrigal. And so we're almost on top of it and it's 10 to 2, so definitely not going to stop there for the night. I'm going to, I think it's probably, I don't know, another two hours or something to get on to Alston and um, the terrain isn't crazy going that way like crazy hilly or anything so perfectly doable there's a pub in Garrigas though um and seeing as I've got this insatiable hunger that I just can't seem to satisfy I'm going to see if I can get a snack or a sandwich or something um that I can eat there before I carry on maybe stock up with a little bit more water as well because I've been getting through loads today nice being near trees again Garrigas is just here around the corner. Look what I've just come across. It's a wild raspberry. There's quite a few of them actually, all along here. Raspberries don't look very big, but at least they're ripe. So I'm going to just have a little feast. So that's the pub, and it's closed. There's a post office just there, so I just bought some um, a couple of Snickers bars and um, bananas, and then I'm going to carry on. Just leaving Garrigal, 
I think I've been calling it Gary Gers. It's Gary Gill. So sorry about that. Uh, I tried not to stop too long and just stopped and ate my banana and stuff, but my feet are feeling a bit tired because I've done basically 15 miles. Now I need to do another five. Five doesn't sound too much, and I think it's more or less following this river the whole way. So I don't think it should be going up too much. I've got to turn off this road somewhere, not quite sure where exactly right now. Probably where that van is somewhere. So apparently I've gone the wrong way. Should have gone on the other road. So I've got to go all the way back again. <sighs> Never mind. I just, um, actually because I came this way, if I uh, stayed here, the village hall has like toilets and showers and they let you stay there at the back of the village hall. There's a kind of local service to Pennine walkers. And um, so I just got to check that out. It's kind of nice. All right, I'm on the right side of the river now, which is good. And I've got to come off the road here somewhere. Looks like there's two signs. I don't want to go over the footbridge, I want the other one. So not that one, I think. Okay, this is the one that says Alston three and three quarter miles. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Three and three quarter miles, I reckon that's going to take two hours. It's now, it's quite windy again. Oops. So, I reckon that's going to take me, yeah, probably about two hours. So it's now 10 to three. So I should be there by five o'clock, which is perfectly acceptable. Oh gosh, look at all these. They look quite spectacular, sort of darker hens. Look at that one, it's almost black. Must be some special variety, I think. Right, I'll stop chatting to hens and get walking, I think. So this is quite a pleasant path. We've got the river just down on the other side of them trees. It's down a little drop. Nice kind of country path, quite easy walking. A little bit downhill. Takes all the boxes, really for the end of the day section. Trying to get through to the campsite, but they're not picking up the phone. So I think I'm just gonna to have to go there and hope that there's a space for me, which no doubt there will be. Most of them seem to have plenty of space at the moment. And it is only a Monday, so I don't think I'll have a problem. And then um, once I get my tent pitched, I'm gonna to go to the supermarket and do a little bit of stocking up for the next couple of days because apparently there's a co-op and a spa there. So I should make myself a luxurious dinner from the co-op or the spa, depending which one's closer. Got all these beautiful flowers just suddenly come into this area where there's lots of wildflower action. Sorry, I can't tell you any of the names of them. If Rose was with me, she would know, I'm sure. Oh, this is very pretty. Look at this. like I've reached my footbridge. I've got to cross over to the other side of the river now. And then according to that sign, Alston is two and a half miles away still. I would have thought it was a bit closer than that to be honest, but okay. Garrigal one and a half, so we've done one and a half miles. Got a bit of a spring on it this one. Okay. 
have to be honest, this last couple of miles I'm finding quite difficult. My feet are really hurting. It's actually quite warm now. My feet are burning hot. Probably should stay and uh, stop and take my boots off and let my feet air out a bit, but I just quite like to get there, you know. Because the trouble is, if I stop now, I'm so tired that I don't think I'd want to start again. So it's better just to sort of keep going. I mean, it's not too bad. There was a bit of a hill back there, but this is fairly flat. It's just sort of crossing sheep fields mainly, going over the odd wall here or there. There's another one coming up with the steps in it. Seems to be typical around here. Pretty hot. So it's now four o'clock. So I've been walking for 10 hours with the odd little break, of course. I think I had two breaks. One with the noodles, and then one I stopped in Garrigill as well. Can't see Alston yet, but there's quite a few trees there, so I'm kind of hopeful that it's behind the trees somewhere. It's got to be, isn't it, really? So maybe if I can try to keep a decent pace up. Another half an hour and I should be able to see it at least. Alright, I've got to tackle another another wall by the looks of it. I find these quite tricky. It's quite easy to catch your bag on them, which sort of trips you up as you as you go over. So you have to kind of work your way up the steps at the side. And then once you go over, there's some more you have to kind of negotiate. I'm going to have to put the going down because I need both my hands and my sticks and I need to use the wall to haul myself up. So good news, I phoned for the campsite and managed to get through so they're expecting me soon. So if we have a look, quick look at the map, um, the symbol where the campsite is in Arston, that's basically the one where I'm going to. And I am just above the bottom of the page at the moment. So I've just got about two kilometres left to go, which is not far. And there's a nice grassy path here, which is quite pleasant. Still can't see the village, but according to the OS map that I've got on my phone, there should be a cemetery just down here. And that's basically the start of the the river down below to the left of me. I must be careful not to follow the Pennine Way when I get to the town because that goes on the wrong side of the river for me and the campsite. Instead I've got to go straight through the town. I can see the cemetery. Just came across the youth hostel in this beautiful little wooded area. the spa then. So this seems to be the campsite.
yes it's a bit weird bringing you into the toilet block but it's so bizarre i had to show you like it's boiling in here i mean it's outside last night it must have been i don't know it feels like five degrees it got really cold and in here <coughs> they keep the radiators on no matter what the weather 24 hours a day it's baking hot in here which is awesome because <laughs> i got my trousers washed and they dried within about half an hour my socks that i'd left there outside i can now just dry the dew off them on the rain 